So, hello everybody. I hope you're well at home and keeping safe um, in this funny time. I thought I would do a drawing of this lovely duck um, in pen and watercolour. So we're going to draw it first. Um, all you're going to need at this time is a pencil, nice and sharp, and a rubber. So we're going to do it in stages. We're going to start off with um, drawing, then we're going to pen it, and then we're going to watercolour it. And he looks very happy, doesn't he, this duck? <laughs> so we're going to start. I'm going to press quite hard so that you can see it. Um, if you're doing it at home, if you do it quite lightly, because then you can rub it out if you go wrong and rub it out, because we're going to rub it out when we come to do the pen. The pen that you're going to need is a waterproof pen, so you need to check that as well so that when we come to do the watercolour it's not going to bleed everywhere. Right let's get going. So the first thing we do, we've got our paper, I've just this is some watercolour paper taped down onto a board with some masking fluid. So the first thing we do is kind of imagine, if you imagine doing an invisible drawing with your finger, so you're kind of working out how big you want him to be. So it's actually just sometimes worth doing that to kind of work out then so that you don't then do your duck here and his bottom's off here or you do him here and his head's off the page. So we're kind of thinking to start with of this middle body shape. So nice and lightly, remember we hold our pencil loosely at the end. We want our arm to do the work not our wrist. Our wrist can't go very far. Our arm can go a lot further. So I'm just looking at this shape here. If you can print it off it's quite useful actually because you can use your finger to kind of help to know that first shape. But at the moment we are just, I don't know if you can see it, up there. I'm going to go a bit harder I think. We're looking at this brown shape. So it comes down here, he then goes round, he then comes down, he then goes up here and then actually there's a point if you see here that we then go up there. So we're just thinking, I hope you can see this, about this shape. We're then going to do, I'm going to just take that in a little bit there so that he has a thinner neck. So I'm looking at this distance of his neck and there's an up curve here. So that way. So remember don't do it as hard as me, I'm only doing it because I need you to see on the video where my lines are. That's then going to go up to his very cute head. So now we can come back to the rest of the body. So if we look at this point, see here where the back, so the back of his body, and it's kind of a straight, straight line there, that's going to come over that way. We've got another bit which is a bit lower. So if you look at that point compared to that point, that's lower and that kind of comes out a bit. Very light in colour isn't it? So we must remember to keep that light when we paint it. So this is going to come that way. Now let's come back over here. So let's go to the bottom. This line curves round, goes up a bit. We're going to then have a leg coming out there. And to start with we're not worried about these nobbles and stuff. We're more thinking about our distance from here to here that it's going to come round like that. Can you see that on the picture? So before I kind of judge where this is, I'm going to come back. So I'm kind of working out a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. So we're coming back. We've got this point here, which we've hopefully got in the right place. Now when we come up here, we've got the wing. So we're going to bring the wing down here, curve, that's then going to flick up. See that nice light flick bit? And then we're going to come down. This then goes up for like a white feathery bit here. Can you see that point? So what we're doing is trying not to think actually, I'm, I'm saying the words like wings and tails and 
but actually we're just looking at that shape. So we're looking at that shape, we're looking at that shape and we're trying to get those kind of the right place and kind of the right shape. So I'm just squeezing him on. If you could possibly move it over a little bit, I think it's fine. So let's go back here. So where this shape is, we've got a curve. See this nice purple shape in there. So we're gonna paint that in with some nice paint. Then we've got a curve. So that curve comes up and then goes across. So this is his wings, isn't it? So we've got like a V dark shape there. This comes over, this comes down and round. That they then has an L shape in here that connects, see that light line there? Down there. So it's just shapes all into connecting. Here we've got a purple bit and that's gonna curve in a dark bit there and a dark bit there. And that's going to link over to there. So now he has some wings and a bottom. There is another curve, we could put that in if you wanted. The more that you put in in your drawing in watercolour, the more you have to then think, or the less you then think, sorry, when you're coming to put your paint on, you're more thinking about your paint than where everything goes. I'm going to move that line out slightly there. Now, we know, and you can start off with a, with a light line, if we look here, this leg in relation to his body, we go up here, bring a line down, we're going to have a leg start there. So we're going to do our starting and finishing points. If you've been to any of my classes, especially children's classes, you know I'm always going on about starting finishing points. You don't have to make it up. You're not randomly letting your pencil go anywhere. You're looking at actually what point that meets with here. Then it's not straight. He's kind of bow legged. So let's put a little bit of an angle on that leg. Now his back leg, so we've got that V point, you know, that we put in earlier. If we bring that down, his leg starts there. Now we don't want them too skinny because he's going to fall over, isn't he, if we get them too skinny. So that has a knobbly knee bit there and comes down. So again, it's at an angle rather than straight down. He's supporting all this big weight. So that comes down, then we go out this way. We've then got, they have funny little flippers, don't they? So that then comes there. So I'm picking up on these main shapes. If you're not sure, use your finger to help you to know what direction the shape is going in. And the more you practice this, the more your eye will just see what direction that's going in. But you need to practice lots. Okay, we've got one foot in there. Let's get the other foot in. So this comes down. Now this knobbly bit, is higher than this bit, isn't it? Can you see that? So we need that knobbly bit to come down there and we're gonna join. His feet are actually touching, aren't they there? Then from this side, I'm gonna put in this line first. So this comes down and then we have a line. So again, you use your finger if you're not sure what direction it's going in. And then across here, it actually goes down and then it goes up. Down, sorry, down, up and down again. Now, if you look, we've then got a little curve in here. And then this is a straight line. So this comes and joins here. So here's my starting point. Here's my finishing point, And we're gonna join them up. There's also, while we're here, a little dark sh like shadow triangle shape, we're going to put that in there. So he has feet, we'll just do while we move up the body, he's got a bit of a lump bit there. So we'll put that on, give him a little bit more shape. His nice full tummy, eating lots of bread at the park. So we've got a body, we've got legs, we need a head now. So this is where we don't need to make it up. We're going to look at what we've got and where it comes. So we know the thickness of the uh, neck here. 
So we don't need to guess. We can work these things out by using what I call working lines. So if you look at where the bottom of the beak is, we're going to come up and we're going to draw a line. I'm going to do mine quite hard just so you can see it, but you do yours softly. We then can work out where that line comes there. So let's look at his body. So actually, probably nearly touches there. So if I bring a straight line up there, we know his beak is going to fit. The bottom of his beak is going to fit in that gap. We also can see that his top beak, can you see there, is further out than that beak. So we're kind of doing scaffolding, aren't we, around his face there. So now we need to work out what this point is. So we've got our starting point is going to be here. We need to work out this distance from here. So we're saying here, we're going to go roughly about here. Okay. So we're going to put that in. Now, how far in from the neck? Can you see that distance from here to here? So now we've got another point. We've got our finishing point. So we're going to curve the bottom and we're going to join that up there. We can then do the same on the other side. Now, we haven't got this bill in, bill, top bill in yet. Sorry, can't get my words out. So we're not going to put that in quite yet. I'm not going to go far enough up. I'm going to stay down there. So now we need to work out this bit. So we've got that bit and we're roughly going to join that line over. That Actually, this top beak goes in line with the bottom of this bit. We're going to have another line that goes, so that's the inside. So then we're going to come up here and we've got a diagonal line. Now this point here is just to that side. So we can join this line to that line. We can then go up a bit, down a bit, and there. So we get this lovely, look at that lovely curved shape. Then this line is going to curve back around. So use your finger. You can use something else. So you could use a pen. You could use a pen to help you to know what direction that you're going in. Now we need to work out this bit up here, which is where it connects to his head. So if I drew a line down, it's not in line with his neck, which you might assume. It's actually where this, more over here, where this point is. So if I draw a working line up, I can see that his head is going to come up there. Let's go back up here. So I'm not doing this bit yet because I haven't worked out this bit yet. And if I get that wrong, I'm then going to be trying to shove these bits into the that shape. So we've got a small curve here. It then goes a curve. Use your finger, your little pointing finger. We've got this lovely V shape that joins around there. We've also got, this is a bit thicker, so you can make this a little bit thicker. It just shows the edge of his beak there. And there's a dark bit. Can you see that dark bit's interesting? It goes on the edge of his beak there. Now, so this line is going to carry on. Now, can you see it curves out and then goes back in again where the eye is? So we need to work out where the eye is. So if we go a little bit up from there, come across, we then know the level that the eye is at, but we need to know where it is horizontally. Well, it comes out a little bit from there. So these crosses here have told us where our eye is. Now, you would naturally want to make that eye massive, especially my children's uh, children that are students. <laughs> but actually, it isn't a comic eye. If we want to make it, we can do cartoony ones, but if we want to make it realistic, we want to look at the size of that compared to, oh, look, we've got an oval. I missed that. See, the more you look, the more you see. I'm going to do a curve there. We've got a line. Can you see that where the light changes? So I'm going to use that line to help me because he has this curve here. It then goes in here and it comes out there. 
So now we've got our eye on the top of our head. Now we can bring this line over to join up with the side of his head, roughly like that. So we have something that looks like a duck now. Hopefully you have as well at home. So we're gonna make this mouth bit a bit thicker on that side. He's also got a line that comes across here. So this is the inside of his mouth. I'm not gonna make, if you're doing really realistic, you do loads of bits, but we're just gonna just hint at all this. There's a curve and a line in that middle and a curve there. We're not, we could go into huge detail, but we're not gonna keep it nice and simple. So I'm just now going around and I'd like you to at home just double checking everything. Double checking, have I got the thickness of that neck right? Is this keg gonna fall off if it's too skinny, that neck? Is this body, do I have that light bit in? So I don't have to think about that. So we're just going over because once we get a pen in, it's too late. It's going to be permanently there. So just go around and I actually think he's looking pretty good. Think of a name for him. My children's classes, my children's students. What are you going to call your lovely duck? So I think we're actually there. We're going to put some shadow and stuff underneath um, afterwards. And I'm just going to go on actually while we're here. And I'm going to... Get rid of those marks so you can see it. So we want to get rid of all the working marks. You won't want them because we don't want to draw them in pen. If we leave them to later, you might pen them. I have had that in children's classes and they've drawn the, uh, the working lines as well. We don't want that. We just want Mr. Ducky in here. Maybe his eyes bigger, I don't know. A little bit, maybe his head's, head's a bit flatter. I've given him too many brains, I think. Let's give him less brains. Maybe a bit narrow in there. Anyway, we're fiddling. So we've got our drawing. And then now we're going to pen it. So you will need a black, mine is on the other side of the table. It doesn't matter really what kind of pen it is, as long as, and I need you, all of you, especially you children, to check this. If your mums or dads or carers have given you a pen that it says waterproof on it. So I have a Faber-Castell here, Unipin do them. I saw in Amazon there's loads of different sets and they come in different sizes. So this is a fine one, so a fine and medium. You don't really want a bold one because that's going to be too much. And I'm very quickly and a little bit scribbly going to go round what we've drawn. So you can do this at home. And in a way, kind of, I think one of the reasons I like pen and wash is it feels a bit like colouring in when you get to do the watercolour. This black bit here, let's use the pen and colour that in. So we don't have to do that with paint. With the eye, we're going to leave those white gaps. Can you see the white bits? You have to leave them. Those white bits are the highlights and they make him look alive. But we also want that brown bit at the bottom. So I'm just going to do it like that. So scribbly, the scribbly it is the more it's going to show different effects. You can do like solid outlines, um, you know, very neat, but kind of like a bit of a feathery look. He's probably just been swimming. So you're just really going over some of your marks. You can spend a lot of time 
I'm conscious my camera might run out in a minute. <laughs> it seems to only do 25 minutes before it switches itself off. So another line in there actually, we didn't put that in. So there we go. You could put some pebbles in at the bottom with your pen if you want to. Some like gravelly bits, you could do some circles. Try to do them random, not too much of a set pattern. Then we get a rubber, rub out our pencil marks. This is why I said don't do it too hard because they'll be left. We want nice pen drawing ready that we can throw watercolor on in a bit. Okay, rub it all out. Have a look. This is going to look funny, the head. Don't judge that. We don't judge our pictures till we're finished, do we? Because you, until you get all the tonal bits on, you need that little bit of an outside bit there. Make sure you've got that bit in. Um, because it's that's white at the moment. As soon as we get that dark with the paint, you'll see it will transform it. Maybe you want to show that that white bit we're going to leave there. So you can do it really neatly and spend hours, or you can do it more sketchy. And you can just pause the video if you're a very neat person. There's a little bit of a curve there, can you see? I'm gonna use my pen to show that curve. I'm gonna use my pen to show some of these lines. Can you see on the feather bits on your printout, if you've got these dark shapes? I'm gonna roughing them up a little bit. Up here, there's like a really definite light shape, isn't there, where it goes and then comes out. If any of your lines go wrong, which I hope they don't because we did a lovely drawing at them, just make it a bit scruffier like this, then no one will know because no one will see that original picture. All they'll see is your amazing work of art. They won't have anything to compare it with. And there's lots of different types of ducks out there. So maybe a few more. So look at the way that they go. It's really important. He is not straight down. He is not straight across. His feathers go. Can you see if you really look? Oh, we haven't got that bit. Let me remember that bit while I am here. Want that nice and light. Look at these patterns. Really interesting. And what I do is I don't put everyone in because I haven't got time for that. We want to paint the next thing, don't we? But actually, just to pick out a few, can you see my finger focuses on them? So my finger will go, okay, I'm just going to focus on that bit and do that shape for now. We've got a bit of a dark bit actually just before my camera runs out. I'm going to just put those bits in and I'm going to put a bit of that dark bit in. Okay, and then I will get ready and we will do the watercolour bit. Okay, thank you. So, right, we're ready for the watercolour bit. I'm going to take you through what you're going to need to start with. So you're going to need some watercolours, a spray just to wake them up if they're dry or just put some water on somehow just to wake them up because they might be a bit sleepy. You're going to need two pots of water, one to wash your brush and one for clean water for softening which we'll go through in a minute. Um, you're going to need paint brushes. Um, just something round like this, or if you've got flat ones, depends what you've got, anything really that we can get paint on with. Um, and kitchen towel or tissue, very important because we're going to be wiping our brushes on them. So now we've got a lovely drawing and I've put our pen on, now we can have some fun putting watercolour on. 
Now, remember that watercolour bleeds, so when it's still dry, um, so we've got to be a little bit careful if one bit is wet. If we put something wet next to it, it's all going to bleed into that area. So we're going to start off with the brown bit. Now, can you see in the picture, there is a lighter brown and a darker brown, okay? So we're looking to see if there's any white. There's a tiny bit of white there, but we're not worried about that. So we're going to make this first color up to start with. If you're using, I saw this on my face, but some people have got acrylic, some people had poster paint. I haven't used poster paint or gouache. Anything really water-based, you can, you can um, water down. Can you see over here? Um, with acrylic, the difference is that once that is dry, you're not going to be able to move it. So you need to be careful that you get it in, in the right places to start with. With watercolour, you can lift off to, to a certain amount, depending if it's stained. So you want a brownie colour. If you've got a really dark brown, I haven't got a really dark brown, you could add, imagine that's really dark, you could add some red into it if, to make it warmer. This colour is actually called Burnt Sienna. And we literally, so you want a bigger brush with this really if you've got one. Can you see how much it's flowing? So if your colour's too dark, put it on. If it's too dark, add more water, move it around. You're in control. We want to do this quickly. The problem with watercolour is people fiddle around a bit too much or go and have a little chat with their friends and then they'll come back and you'll have a hard edge and you'll be upset because when you put the paint back on it, you're going to have a big line. I'm using the edge of my brush just to flick out. Can you see at the side? It's actually feathery there. So we want to try and show what kind of texture is on it. But also, if you leave little white bits, that can make a really nice effect as well. So we want to do it quickly, not faffing. So that's our first layer on there. We're going to come back to that and put some darker on, but when that's dry. So whilst that is drying, we're going to go and do another bit. So which bit shall we do? Now let's do his feet. His feet are fun now. And his bill, we need to do that as well. So what's the difference between his colour and his bill and his legs and his feet? So as you can see, the bill is really yellow, isn't it? Yellowy orange, where his legs are more of a reddy orange. So if you have an orange, so I have a, what we call a cadmium orange, a little bit bright, I'm just going to reach and get a bit of a test of paint. So little scraps of watercolour are quite good to keep and test. If you put it right on the edge, bear in mind it's going to go lighter, you can put it on and you can compare it to your picture and you can judge whether you've got the right colour or the right tone. So that's a bit... Um, too dark. So we're going to put a tiny bit bright, sorry, we're going to put a tiny bit of black. Black's really powerful, so we don't want to put too much in, but that's just going to dirty the colour up. If you haven't got orange, use some red and some yellow. And that will give you an orange too, and then you can add a tiny bit of black into that to dirty it up. So it just depends what colours you've got in. Uh, we're checking to see if there's any white. So before we put our paintbrush on, I'm looking, we've got some light bits in between these. So I'm going to be nice and careful. Try and get it in the light. And just cleaning my brush, put a bit of water. You want it to flow with watercolour. It needs to be flowing. Can you see how easy it is for me to put the paint on? I've gone a bit far there. I want that white bit. So I've cleaned my brush so there's no paint and you can lift it out. You can push it back or you can use a bit of tissue to lift that out. So I'm just showing you some other techniques if you go wrong. So we'll pull that down. We're going to leave that bit nice and white in there. The orange bit comes down here, kind of out here. We're not doing hyper-realistic. We're going to soften that edge. Can you see I've got a crisp line there? I'm going to clean my brush in the water. I'm going to take the excess off. You're going to hear me say this a lot. So you're cleaning the water, your brush in the water, 
you're not absolutely wiping everything out of it you're still leaving a tiny bit of water so we're kind of dabbing it because this bit in the uh, brush is called the well so that holds a lot of water if we put too much water on it's going to push into our paint and cause what call cause <laughs> what we call kind of a cauliflower or a mushroom it makes like a fanned out effect so you have to pretend that you're really confident even if you don't feel confident you're going to pretend that I'm in charge of your watercolour and you're going to go where I want to. So again, let's bring this orange and we're going to leave the white bits again. The white is just showing where the light basically is and that always makes pictures look a little bit more magical when you have a bit of a lighter bit. That bit's got a darker bit and you know that triangle we put earlier, but we'll come back. So I'm leaving the front of this for now. We're going to bring that down and then that go back fill your brush don't make a tiny bit of paint go too far go back fill your brush okay you don't want it let me just show you something can you see that pool i don't know if you can see it on there. we don't want it too too much of a pool if there is take the excess off your brush just tickle it very gently and you can just lift off if there's too much paint on it okay so I think that's enough for our feet for now. Let's go up to the beak. So the beak is more of a yellow colour. So in our mixing, we start with our yellow. We start with the lightest colour that we're mixing. Now I think that is too bright. Too, too bright. So we're going to add a tiny bit of brown to it. And I mean tiny bit. Let's see what that is. And that is just gonna, can you see it just dulls it down just a tiny bit. So now with this bit that comes kind of dark there, up here, and there's light. Can you see these light bits? So there's actually, a, there's a line of yellow that goes there. There's a line of yellow. So there's like a bit of a white square shape. So we want to leave that in these nice white highlights. So I'm going to come around here, down there, there's a bit of yellow over here. Then that's light on that side. Now, see that's a really hard edge. We're going to do that technique again called softening. Clean your brush. We're going to take the excess off. and We're going to wiggle on the side of it. Just tickle it just a little bit and take the paint off. So basically your brush is picking up paint and you're putting it on tissue. Did you see that? Let me do it again. So I'm tickling it and I'm taking it off. And I'm just, what that does, can you see that gives you a softer edge than a really hard edge? Up here, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna do the same whilst it's still wet. I can lift that paint off and I can put it on my tissue and not on my picture. So we've got that bit done. We're going to let that dry. We can always go back and put a little bit more. I'm actually, just while I'm here, can see, so I'm looking at my picture, what we've got. There's a bit of yellowy around here. I don't want it too bright because it's pinky in there. But actually, I think that will make it look a bit better. Having that. So we're now going to let that bit dry. We're not going to work around that. We'll come back and do the head in a minute. Now. Back here on these feathers, we've got a dirty brown color. So we're gonna take a brown and we're gonna add some blue. So adding some blue is a cold color. It's not cold enough. Can you see that's warm compared to that? So I'm gonna add some more blue. I've gone from my French ultramarine, for any of you that know the names. And I've gone to cobalt. Cobalt, this one is a colder colour. French children marine is a bit warmer, it's more like a purpley colour. Perfect. We've got that colour. So we're coming in here. We've got this shape that comes up to here. And then I'm actually going to go to my round brush because it'll be a bit easier in their curved shapes. So this is my round brush. You can lean on your hand if this is still wet. You need to get your hand up higher so you don't put your hand in his chest. 
we're going to put them. And as the paint runs out of my paper, uh, sorry, paintbrush, I'm going to just tickle it a little bit up there. So we're keeping it really simple on this picture. We could sit and paint for hours every single feather. I'm going to actually, I'm going to fill it in there. And I'm going to put a bit on here and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Because actually this is all this light brown, isn't it? I was too busy getting excited looking at all those little feathery bits. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to take the excess off and I'm going to soften it. Can you see? I'm moving around. You have to take that excess water though up because it will flood in and move all your paint. So I'm literally cleaning the brush. Take the excess paint off. We're moving the paint to where we want it. I don't really want it white. So I've just made the executive decision as we're painting to just, and we're going to carry that on a little bit into here. Can you see this is brownie? Then we're going to go back and we're going to put those lovely, interesting dark bits on in a minute. I'm going to move that over. You can perhaps see a bit better. Now, can you see what colour we've got in there? It's like a purpley colour. So what colours make purple? Do you know? Blue and red. Now, depending upon how you mix it, if you put too much red and too much blue, you're either going to get a pinky version. Mine's a bit pink. So I've got to add a tiny bit of blue. You only want a tiny bit here. Now what we could do is use the other third primary colour, so red, yellow and blue. I think someone has come home. Can you hear my dogs barking? <laughs> So, sorry about that, red, yellow and blue, let's have a look, too far too dark, if it's too dark we're going to add water to lighten it up, okay, that'll do, so we're going to come on here, now remember with your brush strokes, clean the brush, take the excess off, we're going to go in the direction of the fur or the feathers, so if you're doing a dog or we're going to use our paintbrush to tickle in the direction. There's some lighter bits up here, so we're not going to put paint on there. They're very noisy, my doggies. Have you got doggies at home that are noisy? They've been fast asleep. So, there's a little bit there as well. We're going to put that in. Now remember, if you want a soft edge, clean your brush. Take the excess off, you'll hear me when you go to sleep tonight, you'll be hearing clean your brush, take the excess off <laughs> as you go to sleep. Now I'm going to go back into the brown we had, you know, that we did up here. And I'm just going to drop a little bit in here, a little bit dirty down there. So then it's fanned out, see because it's wet, we're in control clean my brush, take the excess off. I'm going to tell you this bit of paint, I don't want you to fan up like a tree into there. It does make a nice effect sometimes, but we don't want that on our duck. Okay, I think we're going to leave that bit now. Now, there's another bit of brown up here, isn't there? This bit's quite browny at this point. And then, keep your purple, keep all these colours for now. I'm just going to drop a bit of purple in there. I don't think there was anyone at the door. I don't know who they were barking at. Round here. That we're going to do darker. Um, clean. I'm just wiping my brush actually. I don't need to go and get more water, but I'm just kind of softening that a bit. Now, if I can, I'm going to go back to my purple and there. Hopefully this isn't going to go everywhere because if that's wet, it's going to go out like that. But actually I got away with it there. You could, if it looks a bit light, because remember watercolour, 
dries 50% lighter. Can you see my paint still wet? So if my paint's still wet, I have got a little bit of time where I can just go back in and make those bits a bit light, a bit darker, sorry. So we're going to move away from this edge. See that, that bit's built. So this was a bit wetter and this was damp, so that's come out. You can just, I can just lift that off or you could leave it as quite a nice um, feathery look. So we'll come back to map that and make that a bit darker in the middle. We're going to go in his mouth. So we don't want too bright a pink in this. I'm coming back to our orangey colour. I'm going to take some of the brown that we've just used and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to try that because that's going to give me a dirtier kind of pink. We're going to leave, there's a white edge along there. We're going to leave that and we're just going to, it looks like he's laughing, doesn't he? Something's very funny. We're just going to put that bit in there. And then we're going to let that dry. Now we're going to just go back in actually, the yellow that we had originally. You're now going to take again some of that brown that we mixed up to dirty it up. And we could just add a little bit around here. Can you see on the picture? There's a bit of a change of tone. So there's a bit of a change of what's light and dark. I'm just going to put that one just so it looks a bit more interesting. And a bit more yellow. Now that this is dry, I'm going to do a little bit more yellow on this side in particular because it's brighter, brighter yellow on this side. And I'll put that up so that sits and plays with that bit of brown up there. Okay, maybe a tiny bit of yellow I'm going to have coming down. Okay, I'm liking that. What can we do now? We're going to do a bit of a shadow. This is wet, this is wet, so we can't do the hedge yet. So we're going to do a bit of shadow underneath. So we're going to take some blue and we're going to take some brown because we want like a dirty colour and a tiny bit of black. Probably a bit too much. Let's add a bit more blue using the cobalt blue there and a bit of burnt umber. We're going to test it. So we want it to be kind of a dirty. We're going to put it under here. And what that shadow will do under here is just make it look like he's sat down. Not sat down. He stood up. He stood up. Not sat down yet. Under here. So we're going to soften that. So I've done that hard here. Clean the brush. Take the excess off. Come to the bottom of the paint. And you see I'm just wiggling it, telling it, come out here and play. Come, I've got a bit of water, a tiny bit of water on my brush. I want you to come and play down here. If there's any adults doing this, I'm sorry if I'm talking, I'm talking like I'm talking to my children's class. <laughs> Try to explain it. It's a bit back here. Let's do this bit. Back here. Soften it. Clean the brush. Take the excess off. Soften it. Soften it. This bit's far away. We don't want this bit dark. We just want to show that, they're, that he's basically got shadow bits all around and clean the brush, take the excess off, move that paint around with your brush. Okay, that looks better. I've just dropped a bit of water, I'm just going to take that off. There, now let's have a look, what should we do next? Now, we have some green up here, which is a really tricky colour. You can buy turquoise, but it's not all going to be in your sets at home. So I'm going to take, oh, let me take, wipe that off. Let's get rid of something on here. We're going to take off, uh, let's look. So we're going to take a green. Look at what green you've got in your set. And we're going to add some blue so that we're trying to get a turquoisey one. Can you see? Not like a leafy one. So 
So we need the blue in it. I mean, I have turquoise, but I don't know if you're going to have it in there. And we're going to put a bit on and then we're going to let it dry. So under this eye is a greeny bit. And I think there's a bit of greeny bit here. This is all light. We're not going to go up there. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just going to do, not that bit, we're going to paint all of this bit green and then we're going to go on with a darker colour in a minute. I think that will be the easiest thing for you. But not, we're going to leave a bit here. Okay? So that's our first layer. I'm just going to soften it, clean the brush, take the excess off. So we're just going to wiggle, 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 wiggle. So we soften that, okay? I'm just going to let that dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to come on with some details. So this isn't finished yet. This is our first layer of watercolour, okay? Right, so now it's dry, we can come in and go a bit darker. So we're going to start at the top. If you've run out of room on your palette, clear out a space. And we're going to go blue and red makes purple. Too much red. More blue. Red's very powerful, isn't it? And maybe a tiny bit of black. Don't overdo it. We still want it to look purpley. We're kind of over-exaggerating some of the colours. Adding a bit of water just to lighten that up a bit. So maybe a bit more red, actually. That was red, blue and black. So now we're going to go darker. So we're going to start at the beak. That's a bit too much. I'm going to clean my brush. Too much paint. Take the excess off and I'm going to move that bit of paint. Can you see? I'm going to leave maybe a few bits of this green showing through. So then I'm using not the flat of my brush, I'm using the tip of my brush. A bit like a ballet dancer. Sometimes goes on the flat, sometimes. So I've got less paint. Can you see on my brush? And we're moving around the paint that we've got. I'm going to go back, fill my brush. It's really dark around this eye here. So put where it's really dark on first, then move that paint around. So we're going to leave some of that green. There's lots of green there. Clean my brush. Take the excess off. We have to soften while it's wet. We can't do it so easily when it's when it's dry. So this is still wet. I'm just going to soften this up a bit here. Now here is really dark, isn't it? So let's get that shape in. So it's just a shape in there. And that joins up under the eye there and here. Now often in watercolour it's not about painting, it's about releasing. So can you see if I fill my well of my brush with the paint and I tap it, it releases the paint. So actually I don't need to paint like I would if I was painting a wall. I can paint by just releasing the paint and saying go here, don't go here. So we're going to bring all of this down. And I'm over exaggerating, you know, I'm not doing, we're doing a fun impression today. We're not doing a realistic um, kind of looking duck. Now, hard edge, we don't want that. Clean the brush, take the excess off. And I'm going to move some of this paint that is now going to be lighter because I'm moving it here. So we've got a softer kind of edge and here. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's use a little bit of that purple just on there and just move it. See, it goes lighter as it goes further away. Maybe even a little bit of the green you could just drop in. See? Some of that green, actually, how did we make it before? We used green and we used some blue, didn't we? I'm using my mid-blue. There's a little bit 
I can see of that color back here. I'm just going to put that on and let that dry. Clean the brush. Take the excess off. Are you bored of me saying that? Yeah. And I'm softening, softening those in. It's not so hard edge. Right, let's go back to our purple. So we've got some dark purple in here. So tonally, our light and dark we're looking at now. I'm just going to lift a bit off. If it's too much paint, lift it off. Remember, you're in charge. I'm going to put some of that in. I'm going to get some more paint and I'm going to drop it. Can you see I'm releasing that paint in that bottom because it's darker there? So that hopefully it will stay darker down that bit and on that side. So we need some dark brown again. So let's get brown and we're going to add some blue. Remember how we did it earlier on? Till we get a dirty colour, dirty brown colour. And then we're going to put on, now this is all brown in here. And that's going to come up and then that's in between his wings. I'm going up onto the point of my brush. I'm tickling the top. We're not using the flat of the brush. There's another little bit actually that connects over there. Clean the brush, take the excess off. Soften that left edge, that top edge. Clean the brush, take the excess off. Soften. So one edge, this is your, we call it lost and found. So that's your lost edge and this is our found edge because it's nice and hard. Back in the brown, fill your brush, put it back on. We've got these nice shapes here, haven't we? Feathery shapes. I'm going to put them in. There's a little line. We're going to just wiggle our brush on the tip again. Show some of these feathery bits down in here. Clean the brush, take the excess off, move the paint around. We're going to get a bit more paint. This is a little bit darker. Can you see down here? So we need to put a little bit more paint on. And I'm going to pull these bits around. Okay, I want you to go there, I want you to go there. I want you a bit darker than this bit here. Thinking feathery. Nice and feathery. You could even do some feathery bits down here if you wanted using your tip. Anything that's going to make him look. Maybe some brown bits down here while we've got it on our brush. Like a darker bit there, darker bit there. So that's looking better. Okay, now we need to go really dark brown. So, less blue this time. Still blue. I'm actually using French ultramarine if you know your colours in your palette. And we're going to start here and we're going to miss places. Okay? So we're going to miss anywhere that is a lighter. So I'm flicking with my paintbrush in the direction of the hair. Not the hair. Ducks don't have hair, do they? <laughs> Ducks have feathers. So I'm going in the direction that these turn because he's curved, he's not flat. So some bits you could leave little bits showing. Some bits you could use the flat of your brush and really fill that in. I'm scooping up my paint. There's a really dark shape there, isn't there? And then I'm going to go back to my tip of my brush and make it really feathery. So we're trying to tell somebody, the person looking at our picture, what this duck is made of. And we don't want them to think he's made of plastic. So it, keep going in line with these feathers. Really important. Fill your brush. This bit's all dark here. See on this edge here? You're going to fill that in. Down here. Keep going back, loading your brush. This is using a lot of paint here. 
Make sure you've mixed enough. Go back, fill my brush. You might need to make some more paint. Remember what you did. We did brown and a bit of blue. We could even go a little bit darker. Sometimes having to remix your paint, people panic that they haven't got enough paint mixed up. But as long as it's similar, you're using the same colors basically to mix it, it's sometimes nice because he is a bit darker down here, isn't he? So actually, can you see, I'm just blending that darker color. I've done that on purpose to show you that it doesn't matter if you don't mix the exact same color. We can just blend it in. So we're a little bit feathery again down here. Might just add a bit more brown. So we go vary the color. So if you squint your eyes and look at the photo of the duck, that tells you where your dark, dark bits are and where your light bits are. Feathery. So I'm going to fill all that in. I don't really want to show all the hair. Hair? I keep saying it. Feathers down there. Now, before that dries, I'm being super quick. Speed painting. Before that dries, I'm actually going to drop, you know, I was talking about releasing earlier. You want it thicker, less water, more paint. I'm putting more paint in there, but less water. If you put in less water, it won't travel. If you do it really watery, it's just going to go like that and into everything. So I'm going back, fill my brush. Put these darker bits in. Fill my brush. And just the dark and the lighter bits also kind of give more of an impression of the shape of him. I went a little bit over there. Doesn't matter. It's our impression. I got a bit carried away with my painting. I'm having so much fun. So, darker bits. I think that will do. If you want, you could use a little bit of that colour over here to kind of tie it in. So there's like relationship, but I would, that's not, you don't need to do that. Maybe just a hint, a bit more of the brown of there. Um, maybe a few bits up on this. He's got, it's like he's wearing a collar, isn't it? I think I might call mine Albert. He looks a bit like an Albert. Right, so we're going to let that dry. We're going to go back into your purple and I'm just going to put an extra bit of paint on here. Can you see actually annual dark brown that we've just put on the duck? We're actually going to put in here. That's what I was thinking of there. Clean the brush, take the excess off. Soften it in, maybe even pull a bit of that purple up there. I've waited to do this because it was wet. We didn't want anything. I've lost that light, it's not a problem. Clean my brush, take the excess off, and I'm gonna use my brush like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Suck that paint up. Don't want you there, okay? You could almost as well, just being adventurous, put a little bit of the purple. See in these really dark bits? Just in there just to make him a little bit more fun. Okay, we need to let that dry. I'm faffing around too much. Maybe a bit of the darker color around his beak, because that will make it stand out a bit more. It's a little bit darker on that edge. I've just gone over, not a big deal. If you go over at home, clean the brush, take the excess off. He's gonna take it off his tongue. Saying that, see in here at the back, you want a little bit of dark in there to show that that's the back of his mouth. Clean the brush, take the excess off. Soften that just on that edge. Okay, now we need more Bit of more red and yellow. We're gonna go a bit brighter on his legs just because I'm feeling like we need a bit more fun. So not all over. 
we're not painting the whole thing, we're just doing a few bits. We need to do that shadow, don't we, as well? We haven't done that yet. Just say he's a bit brighter. So let's have a look. So we could do a background. I quite like him on the white actually um, with the thing, but what I think we might do is, and it's always a favorite. I'm going to take some of that nice purple. I've just added some water into it. And I'm going to hold my brush like this, nice and close to your picture. So whoever's looking after you doesn't go mad. And you're going to tap your finger on your brush over your picture. So it kind of maybe looks like he's just been shaking actually, doesn't he? We don't want to overdo it. And you could do, now you need to get this really, you might have to practice this on a piece of paper, it's quite tricky. But we could also not, I want a bit more blue than that I think. You could do a splat. Now I don't know, you might all be experts in splats, but really watery paint. Scoop the paint up into the well. Hold it up high and squeeze the top of your paintbrush. Should we do one over here? If it's not working, it means, that one's not working, means I haven't got enough water in it. Squeeze it. The higher you get, the bigger the splat. Maybe we do another one just so three things in threes are nice. Nope, not enough. It's a bit hit and miss. Splat. Nice. That looks good, doesn't it? So we're kind of just looking, maybe add a bit more of that purple. Just as a bit of fun. We need a bit of dark, so hopefully while we've been having fun splatting. We need to get a little bit of your shadow. So I'm just using that brown that we used earlier. So it all, oh, we want harmony in our picture, harmony. So we use, he's got some toenails. You can paint them if you want. Maybe not red, maybe some dark color. So we're just trying to show that the light, that his, that his feet are a bit more three dimensional and a bit darker up here. So if you imagine his body is hanging over, so it's going to be darker at this top bit where the light can't get in. Because it's all shadowy. So what do we think? Do we think we're finished? Because with watercolour we shouldn't really faff too much. It's just a bit more feathers. I think he looks quite good. I actually just gonna do one more thing actually, so don't go anywhere. I'm gonna make this dark. You see how much watercolor goes lighter? It's very tricky. So I'm actually just gonna darken up some of his head. Cause I'm a bit disappointed that that's dried lighter. It looked like it was gonna be darker enough, but it went a little bit lighter. We always want to try and watercolour to get it the right colour first time, but depending upon how much water we've got, so I'm going to put that on, clean the brush, and I'm going to just soften that edge. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Clean the brush, wiggle this up a bit. So hopefully, now when he dries, I'm actually not going to put any brown in there because there's a nice white highlight. You could, um, I haven't got enough room for it and I want to keep that white highlight at the end. So I'm going to leave that there, I think. Maybe, see this is when we just start flapping a little bit more orangey on his feet, do you think? What do you reckon? I'm squinting my eyes. Maybe get rid of some of that light colour. Do you think we overdid it? I think we should leave it, maybe. So, Albert, wasn't it I named you? I think Albert is finished. I'm going to lift it up. Hopefully it will focus so you can see him a bit more clearly. 
and I hope your ducks are looking equally as beautiful. So you can follow me on Elaine Marston Artist Studio Facebook page, Elaine Marston Artist Studio, and you could show me what your ducks look like. I'd be really pleased to see them. And I'll see you soon with something else new and exciting. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.